Hello and welcome back to Master Meteorology Advanced. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the thermodynamic equation. Alright, welcome back to the series talking about the governing equations of meteorology. If you want to see the first three videos on the first three equations, you can find those on my channel. But today, we're talking about the thermodynamic equation. This is one of the most important equations in all of meteorology, and it basically explains temperature change. So let's say you have a given parcel of air. How much is it changing and why is it changing? Well, this equation tells it all. So throughout this video, don't worry about taking notes or anything. If you want this PowerPoint, you can download it for free at holdhanleyweather.com. Just try to follow along. I'm going to talk about the terms, or first talk about the symbols, and then we're going to talk about the terms, and then talk about what the entire equation really means. So just see if you can follow along and get a gist of what this equation is talking about. Before we can figure out what the equation means, we have to first look at each symbol. So we're going to define these. D dt is the time derivative, how something is changing with respect to time. V dot del equals advection. So that V will probably change, will expand into your horizontal wind components. Your U, which is wind from like San Francisco to New York, and then V, which would be like San Francisco to Canada wind. And then the del would be how those are changing on the x-axis and the v-axis, or the x-axis and the y-axis, sorry. T, that's an easy one. We'll redeem ourselves with a nice confidence booster. That one's temperature, you probably know that one. SP, measure of static stability. Omega is vertical velocity, so how fast wind or air is moving in either going up or down. J is the diabatic heating rate. CP is the specific heat at constant pressure. And if you want more description of some of these, you can find them with a simple Google search or in any meteorology textbook. Sigma is the static stability parameter. P equals pressure, probably know that one. And RD is the dry air gas constant. So now that we have all the symbols, we know at least partially what they mean. Let's define the terms. The first term is when this DDT right here gets distributed with the temperature symbol. So that's going to turn into DT DT. This means the local rate of change of temperature with respect to time. So how much is temperature changing as you move forward, let's say five minutes? It could be a 10 degree temperature change over five minutes. That's basically all that means. Not, not too difficult. The next one, V dot del, gets, distribu gets distributed with the T. This represents horizontal temperature advection. Now that sounds very mathy and very physics. If you want an easy way to think about it, it's just think of cold air moving in makes it colder. Let's say right where I am, it's 70 degrees, but 10 miles west of me, it's 30 degrees. That'd, that'd be a big temperature change, but just go with it. And the wind is moving from their direction to my location. That cold air is going to mix with my warm air and make the temperature where I am colder. So cold air moving in makes it colder. The reverse can also be said if they were warmer and wind brings that warm air, I'm going to get warmer. So horizontal temperature advection sounds very confusing, but it's really not that bad. CP omega, this is the adiabatic term. A change in temperature based on expansional cooling or compressional heating. So think of our parcel of air, and if it rises, it expands. If it expands, it's going to cool. The particles in that parcel are farther apart, so they're going to hit into each other less, and it's going to cool. If we then took that parcel, brought it down to the surface, it's going to compress, and that's going to lead to heating. J over CP is our diabatic term. This means like latent heat release, irradiative heating, and cooling. What's latent heat release? Well, let's say you have a bunch of water vapor in our parcel, and then some of that water vapor condenses and forms a raindrop. 
Well, that's actually going to release heat into the atmosphere around it, warming our parcel of air. Radiative heating or cooling, think of our parcel, super sunny day, sunshine is streaming through, that's going to warm our parcel up. Or there's no sun and our parcel is actually radiating heat out. That's what the diabetic term means. So I wish I could ask if you have any questions, but I guess you could ask in the comments at this point and I'll try to respond to them. This is the basic form of the thermodynamic equation. Think of your parcel. How is temperature changing with respect to time? Well, it's going to change based on if cold air is moving in, it's going to make it colder. If it expands, it's going to get colder. If it compresses, it's going to get warmer. If a bunch of vapor in it condenses into raindrops, it's going to get warmer. If the sun hits it, it's going to get warmer. So it's all these different aspects that change the temperature of our air parcel. That's the basic form of the equation. You'll often see the quasi-geostrophic thermodynamic equation. And it's basically the same thing. All the terms pretty much mean the same thing, but with two variations. You see our V is now VG, and that means geostrophic wind. If you don't know what that means, let's say you have two isobars, lines of constant pressure. Geostrophic wind is wind traveling between those isobars perfectly parallel to them. A geostrophic wind is if, let's say, the wind was pointed towards one of the isobars. Well, then that isn't parallel, and that's a geostrophic. So when talking about quasi-geostrophic equations, you usually throw out that ageostrophic term and just deal with geostrophic. The other symbol you see changed was this one right here, and we'll get into what that change represents. So let's define the terms. We already know our symbols. So dt dt, nice little confidence booster. We already know what this one is. Local rate of change of temperature with respect to time. Don't, I probably don't need to explain that again. So here is where this geostrophic term comes from. V, the horizontal wind, gets, can be separated into its geostrophic component, the one parallel to isobars, and the ageostrophic com component, the one not parallel to isobars. As it turns out, and is true for all these quasi-geostrophic equations, the ageostrophic term makes the math really hard. And think of when these equations were developed, like in the 50s or 60s, they couldn't just plug it into a computer and have the computer tell them the answer. They had to do it all by hand. So ageostrophic was making it way too hard, and as it turned out, it didn't really have that big of an impact on the final answer. So they said, you know what? Let's get rid of this one. And that's where the quasi-geostrophic equations come from. So it's the same thing, horizontal temperature advection, but now it's just by the geostrophic wind, that wind parallel to isobars. The whole term means the same thing though. Cold air, moving in by the geostrophic wind, I'm gonna get colder. Next term, sigma P over RD times omega. This is our adiabatic term, and luckily, even though the symbols change, it still means the exact same thing. Change in temperature based on expansional cooling or compressional heating. And the last term, J over CP, that's our diabetic term. Latent heat release, radiative heating and cooling. Again, means the same thing. Quick summary, the thermodynamic equation is conservation of energy applied to a moving fluid element. Total thermodynamic energy equals internal en energy of the system plus kinetic energy of the system. An example, cold air advection, expansional cooling, and radiative cooling will all lead to a drop in temperature with time. I hope this video is able to help in some way. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching. As a reward and thank you for watching the entire video, I'm giving you a free PDF download of the video slides so that you can go back over the material, and a free PowerPoint download so that you can go through it step by step. You can find those resources by clicking the link in the description or by going to holthanleyweather.com. 
As always, if you learned something new in this video, click subscribe so that you can learn more in the future, and click more videos to start that learning now. Thanks for watching.